Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I am the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, we will be looking at the analysis for Dashcard 6. So, let's get started. Uh, let us first look at the verbal analysis. The verbal section in this mock uh, is from the easy to medium side. There was only one RC reading comprehension which I felt was on the difficult side. But the remaining three RCs are definitely doable as well as most of the verbal questions. So, this is something on the lines of uh, an easy to medium section. Now, let us look at each of the reading comprehensions in detail. The first uh, reading comprehension was on a tropical tribes uh, people. Now, one of the things that I noticed in this mock section was that uh, each of the reading comprehension was getting progressively more and more difficult. Normally, that does not happen. Normally, some of the easy reading comprehensions are towards the end. But in this mock, the first uh, RC was the easiest. And I felt uh, that it was eminently readable. It was the topic was also something I was interested in. As well as there were some nice historical tidbits that were given, which made me uh, not lose concentration. So this I felt was a easy reading comprehension, which I actually got three out of four correct. The second one was about hedgehog versus fox. Uh, this was a debating strategy. Now, again, I felt uh, interested in this topic. And even the wordings were uh, because it was related to current affairs. It was not something which was very difficult. I did not uh, lose concentration. So this also was something I felt was slightly on the easier to medium side. In this also I was able to get three questions correct. Things started getting slightly more uh, complicated from the third and the fourth uh, passage. The third passage was easy to read but I felt that the questions were actually slightly on the more difficult side where there were more inference based questions and questions where uh, which were tricky. So this I felt was slightly on the medium side. And the last RC, which was based on aesthetics, it was a very difficult passage. I was not able to really understand the paragraph. I also came to it at the end. So my mind was already very tired. But uh, in general, even uh, otherwise also, I would have felt this to be slightly on the more difficult side. Because this was more about culture. This was slightly on the culture historical standpoint, about which I am not super interested in. And also the wording I felt was definitely more difficult than the top three RCs. Even otherwise, I felt some of the questions were definitely on the easier side because even without really understanding the paragraph, I was able to get two questions correct. But however, there is definitely some luck involved in getting these two questions correct. Uh, in general, I felt uh, the reading comprehensions were definitely on the easier side. I wouldn't say all of them are easy, but definitely if you are getting these kind of RCs on the day of the examination, you should feel very happy. You would know that uh, the section is not a very difficult section. Now coming to the verbal ability part. The verbal ability had three questions in para summaries, three questions in para jumbles, and two questions in odd one out. The odd one out one question was definitely on the easier side. That is a question that I think uh, everyone should definitely get correct. If you really think about it, you would actually be able to easily found uh, the entire jumbled uh, paragraph, and you will be easily able to identify the line that doesn't belong to the para jumble. The para jumbles uh, and the para summaries were slightly on the medium side, especially the Para summaries I felt were slightly tricky and para jumbles the problem with para jumbles is because they are uh, theta based questions you need to get the exact pattern correct. Many times I was able to get the links between two uh, sentences for example I know that uh, in a particular question uh, as an example I know that the second sentence comes just before the third sentence and I also know that say after the third sentence the first sentence comes. But I am not able to figure out where the fourth sentence comes. Whether it is 4, 2, 3, 1 or 2, 3, 1, 4, both of them are two separate answers. So I missed out on some questions where I got very close to getting them correct, but I was not able to get the entire uh, pattern correct because of which I lost some questions. So I found that the para jumbles were also not very easy, but they were definitely not very difficult because, like I said, I was able to get most of the answer correct, but I was not getting the last bit to be correct. Overall, having said all of this, I would still say that the entire section is definitely on the easy to medium side. And somebody who is aiming to score very high, something like say 97, 98 percentile, uh, should be looking to score around 35 to 40 in this section. Then I think you have a good chance of doing very well in the examination. Even otherwise, if you are scoring above 30, I think this is a good score. This is a score that you should be fairly happy about. Hi friends, welcome to Crackers video series. In this particular video, I will be giving the analysis for DC6. So in DC6, I took the LRDI and quant section, Maruti took the verbal section. So I will be giving my impressions as a test taker for these two sections. So starting with LRDI, 
I felt this was a difficult LRDI section to crack. Uh, in the actual attempt, if you see my attempt, you will see that I have answered uh, one six question set plus one four question set and I got one of those uh, wrong in the four question set I did not actually calculate. So and I, I tried to solve a third set but I was not able to. Honestly, I took a look at the remaining two sets also and I feel that my question choice as far as the six question set was not wrong. Uh, so basically there was this puzzle plus min max question which was a six question set. A knockout tournament which was a six question set, uh, these two were four question sets and both of these two question sets, six question sets were very difficult sets. They would in most scenarios take you 20 minutes to solve. I think the knockout if you were more focused you could have done it in 15 minutes but definitely not under 15 minutes as such if you are doing it properly which makes uh, an ideal attempt over here to be somewhere along 4 plus 4 plus 6 is a very good attempt. A 4 plus 6 is also a good attempt in this case because the two 6 questions were actually fairly difficult to solve, were very time consuming to solve. So in most of these cases, doing 4 plus 4 plus 6 would have been a very good attempt, easily above 99 percentile. 4 plus 6 would have been around a 95 percentile level, that is what I believe because both the 6 question sets were time consuming and on the harder side I felt. Uh, particularly I felt this was a very very difficult question, uh, I, initially it looks easy, it looks like a simple sudoku kind of a puzzle to solve but after that once the min max part sets in it becomes a very very time consuming set to do it per question it takes a lot of time. So I feel that uh, this DILR section was actually fairly difficult on the difficult end and I think a uh, 10 question attempt if you solve 10 questions correctly get 30 marks I think that is a fairly good score to make given the context of how difficult this LRDI section is. Uh, even if you have scored slightly lower I think between 20s to 30s that is still okay below 20s that would be slightly troubling us such. If you have done better than 30, better than like if you have done uh, 4 plus 4 plus 6 or even 4 plus 6 plus 6, excellent, very well done and uh, that indicates that you are fairly well uh, settled in the job of uh, solving rigorous uh, DILRs, very well done. But even if you have not done that well, if you have done only 2 out of 4 sets, do not be disheartened because I feel that one of these sets, both the 6 question sets were on the harder side. So if you have done uh, just one four, 6 question set and one uh, uh, four question set that is just I think about 90 to 95 percentile above that would be 90 uh, if you have done 4 plus 4 plus 6 is easily above 95 percentile I think around 99 percentile in actual CAD terms. So I feel this was a difficult section do not beat yourself up if your attempt was not up to uh, mark because even after the uh, test when I analyzed I felt this was on the difficult side. Now let us take a look at the uh, uh, the things to remember in all of these things. Firstly, the puzzle in MinMax was difficult and time consuming. You have to be very, very good at puzzles and I feel that in most cases you will get puzzle as at least the base of one of the sets and on top of that you will get different things. Similarly, you had arrangement plus then quant based uh, DILRs. So quant based DILRs require quantitative concepts. In this case, it was uh, arithmetic progression or there might be other quantitative concepts such as pro uh, probability, etc. So basically, you need a base or fundamental of arrangements or puzzles and on top of that you have other things that are added on to make a more complex uh, DILR set. The knockout tournament I felt was uh, very conceptual. If you had a very good hold on the concept you could answer all questions correctly but you had to have a very very good hold on the concept because things got tricky after some time. The graphs one was a must do because if especially if you are not weak in DILR always seek out a uh, set like this like the graph set because the graph set is basically if you can read the graph if you can convert that into a table once you do that initial effort of converting it into a table the hard part is done then you are assured at least in this case 3 out of the 4 questions were easily doable if you did that simple work of translating the graph into a table. So whenever if you are struggling with the DILR section make sure that you do not miss out the easy DI sets like the graph set. Okay, so now with that let us move on to the next uh, section which is the quant section. I felt this particular quant section was exact cat level. In terms of the mix of firstly easy, moderate and hard questions where the bulk of the questions were moderate questions. Also most questions were doable in the cat time. So remember that you have 
40 minutes so most of the questions have to be somewhere where it takes around roughly 2 minutes to solve per question when you are doing it correctly. So this way I felt most of the questions were in that category. There were some questions which are on the harder side where you would take 4 minutes to solve them and the job, your job as uh, somebody who is taking the test is to actually spot those questions and to avoid those questions. There were certain like arithmetic questions, algebra questions which would have taken you more time to solve. There was I think one arithmetic question and there was I think one uh, probability question which would have taken you more than uh, uh, 2 minutes or 3 minutes to solve. So your job is to actually avoid avoid those kind of questions. Remember your, uh, in this particular case, one of the reasons why I felt this was exact cat level was because uh, the distribution was also right. Uh, in the case that you have arithmetic geometry, uh, number system, all of that basically is similar to cat level. But essentially in cat what I see more often than not is that arithmetic is on the easier side. Geometry and algebra can be on the tougher side, which is also what I saw over here. There were some easy geometry questions, there were some questions on solids which everybody could do. There were some easy arithmetic arithmetic questions which everybody could do and which essentially is the base uh, level that somebody who is uh, good at uh, quant, uh, not very good at quant but uh, uh, can do a few questions, those are the type of questions you should target and get right. So essentially they do not want very poor scores in quant also and it should not be that only somebody who is very very good at quant should be able to do the quant section. So what you see is often that uh, from the easier topics you get easier questions. So this is what I observed over here, there were easier questions from uh, arithmetic, there were easier questions from like equations, uh, even uh, from functions and all, there were some easy questions that you could actually solve. So that is the uh, distribution of topic and difficulty also I felt was right, perfect in this particular quant uh, uh, section. Uh, there were some difficult questions, time consuming questions. So what I want you to do is when you are analyzing your own mock, uh, the thing that you have to remember is that I should not fall for a time sink question. So go and see your mock attempt. See, uh, did you actually try to attempt any of the questions where the average time to solve was greater than 4 minutes? If that was the case, just see how you could have avoided that trap. Because that question is a trap, it's that it cost you the time that you would require to solve two questions. So you should not be solving those questions at least in your first pass through. So go and check those kind of questions. Did you solve a question which would have taken more than 4 minutes to solve? That is exactly what you have to avoid in actual CAT scenario. So with this, I will end today's analysis. But basically, remember uh, after seeing my analysis go and uh, if you have taken the uh, dash cat go and see your own attempt see what uh, questions you got wrong see what questions you skipped were they doable were they right to skip etc also see which questions you actually attempted were they the right questions to attempt how much time did you take to attempt them so all of this you should put it at your end uh, remember the analysis, best analysis that you can do is your own exams analysis by yourself. So please put in that effort to do that because the insights that you will derive will help you get better in CAT. Thank you.